Men flip the script as women spiral from Sigma traits. For attractive women, is this, like, how big of a concern is sexual harassment? Like, none of you guys are working with Harvey Weinstein out here, but is it actually common for attractive women to actually be harassed in the workplace? I would say yes. Really? Yeah. I, it, but, but with a caveat that it depends on the woman's comfort level because harassment is subjective. So, you know, for example, you know, if you are sending me explicit messages, like, yes, that's a clear de like delineation of sexual harassment. But my brother actually had a, an instance where he was pulled into an HR situation and, you know, he had just put his hand on the back of his assistant and said, you know, can you tell them that I need five more minutes, like, to go tell the new clients, like, just give me a second. And that innocent. was innocent. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So that was an incident. So I think it really just depends on what you deem sexual harassment. And I, and I feel for guys sometimes because. Well, the assistant had to have gone to HR, right? And, and would have said that that made her feel uncomfortable. So, hey, bro, get a new assistant. I know you can't fire her for that reason, but maybe, shit, maybe that's why you can't have a, have a woman assistant, even though they usually would fit the, the job pretty well, honestly, assisting a man in his duties. But it sounds like kind of a liability, right? How do you know where that line is? I don't know. That's subjective. And when folks say things like, believe all women, I have a question, why? Really, why? Because I am inclined to believe stories of sexual abuse. I really am. But when folks say believe all women, you can't believe all women any more than you can believe all men or believe any other group of people. And to suggest that women are inherently more believable than men is sexist. To say that men don't deserve the same due process as women is sexist. And I believe that men shouldn't act like pigs. I've been only advocating this since I was a teenager. I'm the only man in America who was a virgin until I was married and proud of it. I've been advocating for a higher standard of traditional behavior on the part of men literally my entire public career. But that doesn't mean that you get to carve out a section of crimes that don't require evidence. A twist of fate. Women are now facing the unintended consequences of the Me Too movement. And guess what? They have no one to blame but themselves. A forthcoming study in the journal Organizational Dynamics reveals how men's behavior toward their female colleagues has hilariously shifted since the movement gained momentum. Brace yourself. 27% of men now avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings with female co-workers. Yes, nearly a third of men are now terrified to be alone in a room with a woman. Who knew office life could turn into a horror movie? But wait, there's more. A solid 21% of men admit they hesitate to hire women for positions involving close interaction, like business travel and 19% confess they'd think twice about hiring an attractive woman. Sorry, ladies. It looks like being pretty is now a career liability. The research, conducted in early 2019 across various industries, shows a disturbing, and let's be honest, comically ironic, trend. In 2018, when Hash Me Too was all the rage, 15% of men were reluctant to hire women for jobs requiring close interpersonal interactions. Fast forward to 2019, and that number had jumped to 21%. So a paper came out recently that looked at the impact of the Me Too movement on academia, and it actually shows that post Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. The paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of sexual harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. Wow. The author points out that men feel like if they they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. She also notes that institutions that have clear policies on sexual harassment help reduce this perceived risk. And this isn't just in academia. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the concerns. And so the thing is, if you're in one of these workplaces and, you know, maybe you're in the office, you know, depending on what field you're in, chances are, it's just likely, that this woman is one of these boss babe types who very likely is going to be sort of liberal and progressive. And it's certainly true that with these types of women, you do have to walk on eggshells around them, which is why it's not fun to be around them. And which is why if I were, you know, some of these dudes, I would do the same thing. I would steer clear of them, especially the more they reveal just how progressive they are. Like these women are extreme liabilities. For sure, because you never know what you're going to say. It's going to offend them. And then they're going to run to HR and say, this man is being toxically masculine. And if you're a white man, good Lord, stay away from these women even more so because they hate you. And just know that. It just It would make sense that even the fact that they are in a career 
And especially if they wear some sort of pantsuit, you know, or they're in an office environment, business, this type of this type of thing, chances are they are like a progressive woman. And it is true that with these women, these progressives, they get offended easily. They get triggered easily. And with modern women as a whole, it seems like kind of got to walk on eggshells around them because they're so damn sensitive and they're so prone to being offended. And they've been so pedestalized all their life that any minor inconvenience from a, a male to them is oppression and they don't like the way it made them feel. So they're going to take it up with HR and see if they can't put a cap on this toxic masculinity in the workplace. The finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas women don't make up for it at all. The author concludes her findings by saying that Me Too was important for raising awareness, but it's also increasingly important for institutions to have really clear sexual harassment guidelines. The Me Too movement has become big enough to encompass everything and diffuse enough to risk becoming nothing at all. As it descends the ladder from rape to bad dates, it's becoming a category big enough to be meaningless. Four months ago, we learned the shocking news about Harvey Weinstein. Soon after, we heard about more monsters in every- Didn't one of Weinstein's cases get dropped? Harvey Weinstein rape conviction overturned by New York Appeals Court actress Ashley Judd, who previously came forward with allegations against Weinstein, called the latest ruling an act of institutional betrayal. What's going on here? New York Appeals Court overturned Harvey Weinstein's 2020 conviction Thursday, ordering a new trial and a stunning reversal of a landmark Me Too case and a 4-3 decision. The appeals court found that Weinstein's trial judge allowed prosecutors to call women who said Weinstein had assaulted them to testify, even though their accusations did not specifically relate to the entertainment mogul's charges. So this one was in 2020 that just got overturned, and then it looks like he was also convicted in 2022. And they're going to appeal that one as well. The Me Too hashtag took off and a movement was formed. More women came forward, more powerful men were fired. But just as quickly, some men were unfairly caught in the crossfire. Matt Damon said that groping someone's butt was different from sexually molesting a child. The mob said he was callous, misinformed, and part of the problem. An anonymous woman described a disappointing date with Aziz Ansari and suddenly, Bad hookups were added to the list. Mm. Some women said the problem was the male power structure itself. And soon, smashing the patriarchy was added to the long list of goals. It seemed that almost- uh, Western women for you, ladies and gentlemen. Somehow, we ended up with them. Every woman had some kind of experience or goal that she wanted to add to the agenda. No problem was too small or too vague to be included, so long as a man was to blame. The women's movement in America began at the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848, and it also included a long list of goals. Soon enough, leaders focused on one goal, suffrage. It was a reckoning, a watershed moment, and it changed the country forever. If Me Too is going to change America, it needs to focus on its original and most serious goal, ending the kind of workplace sexual harassment that has plagued women ever since they entered the workforce. It went from a supportive movement to a full-blown witch hunt. Really disappointing. And yet, when men take steps to ensure they don't harass women, they get criticized. Wonder why? Oh wait, they want certain men to stick around, but even those guys are hightailing it out of there. There was a woman who published a blog post about quitting her job because she was being harassed. But reading her story, it turns out the harassment was a guy sending her an email asking her out on a date. She said she felt pressured and quit. She even posted the full email, which was just him asking if she was single and if she'd like to grab coffee. Not the smoothest move, sure, but does it really warrant blasting him on the company-wide network? Seems like a huge overreaction. Well, let's look at this graph here. And this is about how couples used to meet, basically. So this one down here in 1940 starts at about 5%, this green line here is met through as co-workers and it started to spike around the 90s and early 2000s and it's on the decline now just about as every other way is on the decline except for met in a bar or restaurant and someone said that people are probably lying about this and they probably actually met on a dating app and then met up at a bar or a restaurant and that's just what they tell people which you know i, I kind of believe it but, you know, you can see that in 2020, it's, we can see that met through uh, as co-workers is on the steady decline as well. I mean, everything else is too, so it doesn't really say that much. But it is one of the top ways that people have became couples. And in 20, 
2000 and the late 90s, even 20%. But to my, tonight, one retired CEO is speaking out about why he thinks this might end up having the wrong effect on women in the workforce. Steve, Trisha, well, this new wave of women standing up against sexual misconduct has led to all sorts of changes. But tonight, one CEO believes it may be preventing women from getting the jobs they want. From the entertainment industry to the gaming world, women everywhere are standing up against sexual misconduct in the workplace. It's a new day. It is the era of the women now. Western women are almost programmed to be constantly on the lookout and on the hunt where they can start to address and call men out on some sort of perceived bad behavior. This movement right to the Las Vegas Strip. Casino mogul Steve Wynn stepping down as CEO yesterday after allegations he sexually assaulted employees. But is time really up? I have a big concern, and it's what's going to happen in hiring going forward. Mark Yosiloff is the director of UNLV's School of Gaming and Innovation and hired hundreds of men and women as former CEO of Shufflemaster. He says this movement will make it tougher for women to get hired, especially when they're up against a qualified man. They might elect to hire the man because they are concerned that down the road, whether they do anything wrong or not, there might be a she said, he said. Yoslov says current CEOs he knows have already opted not to sit in meetings alone with women in fear they would do something to spark a complaint. Well, it's funny because she said CEO. You'll notice that these men of power are not stupid, and they know that because they have more power, they're more likely to get thrown some sort of accusation at them, which is just funny and hilarious in itself that it's like there's a sort of correlation between how powerful you are and how more likely you are to get fake accusations put on you. Like, what does that say about these feminazis and these, these, these Western ladies? You know, what does that say about them? It says that they know they stand to gain more if there's a man who has more, resor more resources, more power, more status. And these types of men are more likely to get these accusations put on them. Smart men, very smart. And if I was in that position, CEO or whatever, I would understand that these women around me are going to be liabilities. And if I have a family, children, and I have a lot to lose, it's going to be in my best interest that I cut off these women completely. And there should ne I should never be in a room, a room alone with one of these women. There always needs to be a third person, probably needs to be cameras. And it's funny, right? What does that say? about these women that we have to do this. And this guy is absolutely right. And it's kind of the same thing about hiring someone who is maybe now they yesterday, right, they identify as a male, but now today they identify as a female. And then they're going to come into the workplace and have these pronouns. And if you don't, and if you, and if you don't, hit those pronouns right on target and if you accidentally say the wrong pronoun all of a sudden this is a liability and this person is going to interfere with the workplace and now you the owner the business owner the ceo whatever now you have a massive lawsuit on your hands or some sort of mass cancellation from a bunch of extreme leftists on the internet who came together to try to get you fired and there's some sort of go fund me because this person got misgendered and it, and it is because it's like extreme progressiveness progressivism is a massive liability in general whether it's a feminist or maybe it's someone who now identifies as something different than people previously knew them to identify as like it's just going it's it's a liability and it what it is 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 it's holding people around them to a standard that is going to be very difficult for them to meet and is often subjective and is not objective. And it's kind of going to be difficult for someone to understand where the boundaries are with you. And these people are going to have to walk on eggshells around these other people. It's a craziness that no executive wants to have to face. Many people, including myself, only became aware of the Me Too movement in 2017 when Rose McGowan, a white wealthy woman who was a famous actress, brought it up. But it was actually started all the way back in 2006 by Tarana Burke, an African-American social activist. Women of color have been speaking up about sexual abuse in low-income workspaces for ages but they never garnered the same attention as a rich white actress. There's been some backlash about Me Too and some anxiety, as you might imagine. Many, many male managers and owners um, are feeling a little bit more tentative 
when working with and, and managing their female workers. Listen to this. A side result, an unintended consequence of the Me Too movement has popped up. Male executives and managers, some, are now saying they are afraid to work with and mentor female colleagues in the workplace. So we're trying to find out, is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment? Well, see, here's the thing. They don't, it's like, again, it's, it's, it's subjective. And ultimately it gets easier to just remove the problem itself because the problem has flighty feelings and fleeting emotions that one day, oh, I feel this way. Next day I feel this way. You're the problem taking you up to HR, HR taking you to HR and I'm coming for you and I'm putting some accusations on you. It's just easier for these men to just completely remove the problem instead of having to figure out, you know, what is and isn't sexual harassment to this woman, but maybe it is to this woman and it's there's no point. And a lot of this is coming out to be proved that a lot of these accusations are false. So how do you prevent yourself from getting false accusations? Just avoid them. Make sure there's a third person record always have cameras so it makes sense and these women you can tell they're upset like this woman here is like is it really that hard for men to to figure out the difference between mentorship and harassment it's like no it's not hard for us it seems to be hard for you guys because it's extremely subjective and we get plenty of false accusations so it's not difficult for us to define harassment it's actually very clear we're actually very aware of what it is. It seems to be an issue on your part as as women, and it's sort of fleeting, and it's hard to, it's very elusive what sexual harassment is to these women, and not to mention that a lot of times it's just completely false. Is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment? I don't know, you tell us, right? You tell us. I can't give any more information, uh, but I fear I may have girl boss a bit too close to the sun. Large percentage of male managers were concerned about working with women one-on-one -on -one in the workplace. They were concerned about mentoring women. They were saying they were afraid to have meetings with women, to travel with women, and so on. It indicates that there are anxieties and fears that we need to address. The movement meant to protect women has also turned men into cautious, second-guessing wrecks in professional settings, creating a new set of laughable challenges for women in the workplace. Who would have thought trying to navigate office politics could get even more awkward? Ah, the Hash Me Too movement, where every workplace interaction between men and women feels like an HR horror show just waiting to happen. Now, some men treat female colleagues like ticking time bombs avoiding them like the plague for fear of being falsely accused of harassment. Who needs mentorship and professional growth when you can just stick to your own gender bubble, right? And let's not forget the confusion. With the lines between appropriate and inappropriate behavior blurrier than ever, everyone's walking on eggshells, scared to say or do anything that could be misconstrued. Who knew workplace interactions could be this much fun? Welcome to the new era of professional relationships where paranoia and awkwardness are the hot new trends. Earlier this year, I had the displeasure of dealing with a female coworker harassing a male coworker. A male subordinate comes to me to report the female subordinate. She decided that she wanted his opinion on fellatio techniques. She asked him because he's openly gay. I went with him to HR to report. HR calls everyone involved to get their side. At this point, the female employee realizes the male employee snitched and begins badmouthing him. HR hands down punishment based on zero tolerance policy. Three days unpaid suspension for the male victim, but only one day unpaid suspension to the female employee because she's pregnant and we can't cause too many problems. What? The male employee came back from suspension with legal representation. The female employee came back and all the male employees avoided her and any situation where they would need to be alone with a female employee. Now, here's a quick one about a gal who she, as well as her female co-workers, are having a meltdown because a guy at work isn't paying attention to them. And as I say, women, uh, they need attention validation the same way plants need sunlight and water. And how if a guy rejects them, either rejects their advances, doesn't pay attention to them, they lose their freaking minds. Title. A colleague at work, a 27-year-old male of one year, refuses to socialize with me, a 24-year-old female, or any of the women in our office. Based. Oh, the travesty. There are plenty of other horrible things going on in the world, but nothing is as horrible as a guy, God forbid, not paying attention to you and your friends. She says here, 
Hi all, I'm posting this on alternative, uh, alternative site because I know a few of my friends are following me on here and I don't want this spilling out until I have some clear thoughts on what I want to do. Oh, you're trying to say you don't want any drama because something tells me you like drama. So early last year, our firm hired Dan, a 27 year old male. In the first few weeks, he was really quiet and didn't talk much, and that's just how we thought he was. Every conversation with him was short and to the point and never deviated from work, aside from pleasantries, have a nice weekend, etc. About two months ago, he started becoming a bit more friendly with the guys in our office, and they would hang out every so often after work and have normal conversations. Isn't it interesting that she and her friends are really paying close attention to what this guy is doing? However, when any, whenever any of the girls in the office tried to do so, he would quickly ch change the conversation back to just work or not reply. Even now, after a year of Dan working with us, he straight up refuses to socialize with the girls in the office and he's making them feel uncomfortable. Oh, now he's the bad guy. He's making us feel uncomfortable. Maybe he's sticking to business. Maybe he's worked at a place where the girls act like it's high school and wants nothing to do with that. Or maybe he's become very understands about MG Tao, things like that, he knows the Mike Pence rule, and he's doing that for a good reason, but he's making you uncomfortable. He avoids any discussion of himself outside of work-related events and future plans and doesn't ask any of the girls either. Aware as he is, what can I only assume, pretty good friends with the guys in the office. Even on work meals out to celebrate events, he's only doing the bare minimum when it comes to conversation with the girls. Where again with the guys, he talks to them like there is no problem whatsoever. I don't know if I'm overreacting. You sure about that? But one of the girls is considering going to HR about this because she is saying it's creating a hostile work environment. Dan treats us like he treats clients we work with. Cordial and strictly about business and it's wearing thin now. Any advice is appreciated. Okay. She asked for advice, so I'll give some advice. You and your friends need to grow the F up. You're 24 years old, so I'm assuming all the female co-workers are probably in the 20s. We all know what generation they're in between the Z-tards and the millennials. And they it's rough being a man in this world. Who knew a simple hello could spell the end of a career? It's a wonder any work gets done with everyone tiptoeing. in this case, not a hello. Scared that a misplaced compliment might lead straight to the unemployment line. Sure, it makes perfect sense to avoid interacting with women altogether. Why bother with professional relationships when you can just stick to your bros? After all, why take the risk when one false move could bring everything crashing down? This is a classic tale of gender bias in action. It's a story we've heard far too often. Picture this. A woman harasses her male colleague, but when he dares to speak up, he's the one facing the consequences. How could this happen, you ask? In a world where gender roles are often unfairly skewed, the idea that a man could be a victim of harassment seems to baffle some. Instead of receiving support and understanding, he's met with disbelief and scorn. After all, men are supposed to be tough and impervious to such advances, right? The irony is palpable. A man harassed by a woman is often seen as weak or incapable, while the woman's actions are brushed aside or even excused. And it's not just men who are wary of women these days. There's a growing trend of women expressing reluctance to hire other women. According to a 2018 survey, over 10% of both men and women indicated they were less inclined to hire attractive women than they were in the past. Note, newer data regarding women's attitudes is not yet available. It's quite the comedic turnaround, isn't it? After years of men bearing the brunt of Hash Me Too's reckoning, we're now seeing some women facing their own comeuppance. Suddenly the tables have turned, and it seems that no one is immune to the consequences of their actions. I want to read some of these comments. Making a woman feel uncomfortable should never have been equated to harassment or assault. Everybody feels uncomfortable. Life is uncomfortable. Interacting with women is like standing in front of a loaded gun. My IT pal got fired for complimenting a gal. He started a truck shop and has 75 guys working for him. No estrogen allowed. Women act on current emotion. Men act on past failure. Interesting. They absolutely do not deserve sympathy for the horrors they inflicted on humanity on purpose. Oh, I don't want to read that. As man, I've been SS harassed at my job and made a written statement to HR, and I was reprimanded for filing a concern. Hmm. I don't know if I believe that. If I have to take anti-harassment training to keep my job, do women have to take anti-false harassment allegations against men in the workplace training to keep their jobs? A colleague of mine overheard a bunch of women in school's cafeteria while sitting with friends back when he was still in school. She'd slept with this guy over the weekend. Her friend said, ooh, gross, he's ugly. Her, she said, well, I didn't really want to, but he pressured me into it. Her friend said, men always push girls around. You should do something about it. Oh, interesting. 
That's when they stood up, walked over there, told the girls they heard everything, how they changed the story because their friends didn't like the boy, and they were going to head to school rector to let him know they would be witness if the boy was accused of anything. So the moral of the story, or I guess the story here, is that girls change their story based on if their friends like the boy. Oh, okay, well, I mean, that actually makes a lot of sense, right? Because if this girl tells her friends, like, yeah, you know, I hooked up with this guy, and they're like, ooh, he's ugly. She's like, well, I mean, he kind of just convinced me to do it. I wasn't really that into it. You see how these things can change just like that. That's a good story. Uh, but yeah, you know, it does make a lot of sense why so many men would be preferring to, you know, create a little bit of distance between them and the women in their workplace. To me, it's a little bit different if this is someone working a job that they don't really think they're going to be around that long. But if you're a man and this is your workplace and it's like a career, you plan on working here for decades and you don't plan on really moving around, it really would make sense, you know, especially if you have a family and you have a lot to lose. It would make sense, man, why you would do your best to just kind of keep these women at a distance. Definitely makes a lot of sense if these are like CEOs, right? And if you've got a lot of power, you're the manager. And especially if you're dealing with like raging feminists and it's like a boss babe environment where this is where boss babe feminists are known to work at. Yeah, man, they're going to be a, a, a liability big time. The more progressive they are, the more you want to stay away from them. Definitely. That's where I'm going to end it. So if you enjoyed it, do me a favor and drop a sub. All right.